Well, once again, we've reached a year where the Academy decided to fully and completely ignore all the best films it had to offer. The Princess Bride, Full Metal Jacket, The Untouchables, Raising Arizona, Empire of the Sun. Hell, if the Academy was daring, it could have given some nominations to iconic classics of less celebrated genres, such as Predator, Evil Dead 2, and Robocop. Just look at that star-studded lineup. Now, some of these films were indeed nominated for some minor awards, but of course, none of them was nominated for the big one. No, in 1987, the Academy had its eyes on one film and one film only, The Last Emperor. And I have no idea why. The Last Emperor utterly demolished the Oscars that year. It was nominated for nine awards and it won all of them. That's right, The Last Emperor made history by matching Gigi's record for largest Oscar sweep at the time. Another interesting fact is that the film's director, Bernardo Bertolucci, became the first non-American or British director to win Best Director. You could say that Milos Forman was the first, but he was Czech-American, while Bertolucci was all Italian. All of that sounds pretty impressive, but unfortunately, this film just didn't do it for me. The plot of the film centers around Pu Yi, the last emperor of China, as it tells the true story of his rise and fall and how the political and social landscapes changed dramatically for China during the 20th century, as we see this once great empire taken over by communism. The Last Emperor really did have potential. The film is grand in scale and ambition. It's beautifully shot, the set design and costume design was top-notch, visually the film is great. But other than that, there's nothing else going for it. And in fact, it has more than a fair few issues that really brought the film down for me. For starters, and most importantly, I just didn't connect with any of the characters. There are a few reasons why. The film, through its direction, chooses to keep a distance from the characters, for some reason. Instead of making me feel what they feel and really get into their emotional state, it felt to me, while I was watching, that I was looking at the characters through a glass window. You see things happening, sure, but the emotion just isn't there. As a result, it didn't allow me to fully connect with them. Another issue with the film is that all the characters spoke English. Now, that usually wouldn't be a problem, but here it worked against the film. It was evident that the majority of the actors here didn't have a firm grasp of the language, and that hindered their performances severely. You especially feel it during the opening scenes when Pui was a toddler. It was so obvious that they had to cut around his acting in post, but more on the lackluster editing later. If the actors actually spoke English and they knew how to act with the language, then I wouldn't have a problem with it. But because the acting was poor, the fact that they spoke English just broke my immersion. And the problems, unfortunately, don't stop there. As previously mentioned, the editing was pretty lackluster. The film felt really choppy. Scenes didn't connect with one another seamlessly, and everything felt contrived. The film kept jumping forwards and backwards in time ceaselessly, with zero elegance. It was a mess. I attribute it to the fact that, just like Amadeus, the film has more than one version. I saw the theatrical version for this review, which clocks in at around 2 hours and 40 minutes. But the filmmakers shot way more footage than that, enough to make an extended version that lasts around 3 hours and 40 minutes. There's no way in hell that I'm watching that version, are you insane? If the theatrical version was great, then maybe, but it's not, so I'm not gonna waste my time with it. Anyway, even if that's the reason why the film felt choppy, that still isn't an excuse. The film should have been edited better. It's a shame, because as I said, the potential was there. The Last Emperor looks amazing, the music was fantastic, and a few dramatic scenes hinted at what the filmmakers were aiming for. Whilst the majority of the acting fell flat, John Lone did a good job as Pui, as did Peter O'Toole in a supporting role as his mentor. Maybe it was good because he actually speaks English, but whatever. Unfortunately, with all the positive things I just mentioned, the bad far outweighs the good. It seems that all tendency to hand the award to the large-scale yet bland historical epic rears its ugly head yet again. The Last Emperor, for me, was a definite miss. The Last Emperor failed to impress, and it's reflected in the ranking. It's one of the worst Best Picture winners of the 80s so far, surpassed only by Out of Africa. Don't worry, it's not that bad. But hopefully, the next one delivers on its promise. Up next is the 61st Best Picture winner, a buddy road trip comedy drama starring a very young Tom Cruise and Dustin Hoffman in an Oscar-winning performance, Rain Man. Check back again for the next video of DB Review's Oscar Madness Marathon and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss a thing. Thank you all very much and let the journey continue.